Welcome back to Combat Sports Weekly. This is a part of the show where we take a look at national and local headlines, as well as, you know, my personal favorite, the highlights. Let's jump right into the national headlines. As of this recording, there are a lot of reports and rumors that Jose Aldo has suffered a fractured rib and you know, the potential of him fighting Conor McGregor next month is up in the air. So I mentioned there's multiple reports that Jose Aldo suffered a fractured rib before his bout, a couple of weeks before his highly anticipated bout actually against Conor McGregor July 11th in Las Vegas. We'll make sure to get our roundtable's thoughts on this fight and what would happen, who might come in as a replacement this late, but it'll be pretty difficult to get someone this late. So I'm not sure if they have any of the latest rumors, but we'll make sure to check in with them. Saturday night in one of the most anticipated fights of the year, Sean Porter defeated Adrian Broner by unanimous decision in Las Vegas, Nevada. The fight aired on PBC on NBC and actually did pretty decent ratings for boxing, 2.4 million view viewers. Broner was able to drop Porter in the 12th to make things interesting, but never really developed a rhythm throughout that fight. So Adrian Broner suffers his second loss and Sean Porter starting to become a houseful name. A lot of us thought, I think our round table went undefeated, right? Five and oh, we all picked Porter in that fight. So good job guys. Andre Ward was back in action Saturday night. It was a fight that aired on BET. I'm not sure how you guys felt about the, the black ring, but the production actually looked, it looked pretty awesome, but I'm not sure if a lot of people actually saw it. He defeated Paul Smith by ninth round TKO in Ward's hometown of Oakland. The fight aired, as mentioned, on BET and was promoted by Jay-Z's Rock Nation. Ward stays on being, but he didn't look like he was in his championship form. We'll see who they throw at him. Potential fight with Gennady Golovkin, we hope, at some sort of catchweight. Hopefully, Triple G doesn't have to move all the way up to 168-pound weight class to keep us all entertained in a, in a pretty, pretty highly anticipated bout. Another bout that was anticipated, or whether, whatever you want to call it, but Kimbo Slice defeated Ken Shamrock via first-round knockout, or TKO, I should say, at Bellator 138. In a fight that are many questioning if, if it was legit, I mean, Kimbo Slice's punch was legitimate. It gave Shamrock a pretty bad cut on the left, the left side of his face. The fight drew 2.1 million viewers on Spike. Pretty big ratings for them. So nonetheless, you know whether you like it or not, the, the fight to me was entertaining. We'll talk about it and we'll hit it here on our roundtable as well. Big knockout boxing. Tyrone Spong is in the main event there against Julian Pollard. Both men are making their BKB debuts. A fight takes place Saturday night. For 30 bucks, not sure if you guys want to shell those out. Those fights tend to be exciting because of how small that ring or circle is, if you will, in that pit that they fight in. Jesus Soto Carras, pretty experienced boxer, and Shane Mosley Jr., son of Shane Mosley, former uh, world champion, of course, are on the card as well in separate bouts. So BKB, this is the third big promotion they put together. Let's see how long they can keep that train running. So what happens, pretty entertaining cards so far. Saturday, also, pretty loaded day. Tim Bradley will be taking on Las Vegas' Jesse Vargas, again, as mentioned, in a fight that will take place in Carson, California. The fight will air on HBO. The two will face each other for the WBO interim welterweight title. It's, the fight's taking place at the StubHub Center. It's one of the best venues for boxing, so hopefully that sparks some excitement the way it's done in the past. That does it for National. Let's jump right into the local news. Two very quick topics for you. Omar Chavez, son of the great Julio Cesar Chavez Sr., will be facing Hector Munoz, as we mentioned in the past. The fight, we have an update for you regarding televised portion of it. This fight will air on Showtime, or at least it is expected to air, according to what Hector Munoz told us. Uh, it's going to show kind of late here in Mountain Time. We're typically used to seeing fights start around 8. This one's likely to air at 8.30 or 8.45, so make sure you guys check that out. In a fight that both guys desperately need. In other news, Amber Brown, Albuquerque's number four Adam Waite, again, that's the world ranked, according to the Unified Women's MMA rankings, will be fighting at Invicta FC 13. That's taking place in Las Vegas. So Brown will be facing Cass Catherine Costigan at the Cosmopolitan. Uh, Catherine, I believe, is ranked top eight in the world in that division. So it should be pretty entertaining fight. A lot of people are hoping for an Amber Brown versus Jody Esquibel fight. They're both ranked fourth and fifth respectively in that weight class. But if Amber Brown pulls this off impressively, I can definitely see her having a title fight. So that'll do it for the local news. Let's jump right into the headlights, or highlights, excuse me.
Not sure how many of you guys saw this, but look at that takedown. That's world class. Hassan Adam and David Lemieux. David Lemieux's left hook was on point. I would love to see. People are salivating over a Triple G versus David Lemieux or a Triple G versus Canelo Alvarez. I want to see Lemieux against Triple G. Hassan Adam, who was knocked down, I think, six times against Peter Quillen and still gave him a heck of a fight, didn't get knocked out. He was dropped four times here, still gave David Lemieux hell. David Lemieux improves to 34 and 2, new IBF middleweight champion of the world. Here's the fight from Saturday, another fight from Saturday, I should say. Sean Porter and Adrian Broner in a pretty fouled, filled bout. A little alliteration for you folks, but Porter, a lot of us felt, would give Broner trouble just because of his style, similar to Marcos Maidana, and he was, but this was surprising to everybody. That quick left hook that Adrian Broner was able to snap, but it was a little too late as that took place early in the 12th round. Even Porter shot. Look at that face. Like, where the heck? Sean Porter moves on to victory. Andre Ward. We had to pull this off European TV, but Andre Ward and Paul Smith face each other. Look at Paul Smith's face. was just a bloody mess. He was just overmatched by Andre Ward. And what I feel is maybe a B, B minus performance from Andre Ward will definitely have to see who his potential opponents are. But the fight ended here in the ninth round. Uh, the crowd is pretty hyped there in Oakland. And again, they're coming off a victory, of course, in the World Championships for NBA. Andre Ward, there's a towel. Extremely happy to be back after almost two years. And in what isn't one of the greatest fights of all time, but pretty entertaining, I felt, Kimbo Slice and Ken Shamrock at Bellator 138. A lot of us felt that Ken Shamrock was going to finish that and look pretty... I don't want to say suspicious, but borderline suspicious how he did not keep that hold. But Kimbo Slice was able to stand up and land some pretty big shots, especially that one there. Drop Ken Shamrock, and that'll do. Kimbo Slice was victorious. What's up with that chest hair, man? Where is it pointing? I don't understand. But that'll do it for headlines and highlights. Make sure you guys catch us after the break with UFC fighter Tim Means. And our roundtable is going to tackle all those topics. Catch you guys.